Today, we celebrate the great feast of our two pillars of the church, Saints Peter and Paul. And today's Mass is also offered for the soul of Michael MacDonald. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Brothers and sisters, as we prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you. We glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who on the solemnity of the Apostles Peter and Paul, give us the noble and holy joy of this day, grant, we pray, that your Church may in all things follow the teaching of those through whom she received the beginnings of right religion. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. In those days, King Herod laid violent hands upon some who belonged to the church. He had James, the brother of John, killed with a sword. After he saw that it pleased some of the people, he proceeded to arrest Peter also. This was during the festival of the unleavened bread. When he had seized him, he put him in prison and handed him over to four squads of soldiers to guard him, intending to bring him out to the people after the Passover. While Peter was kept in prison, the church prayed fervently to God for him. The very night before Herod was going to bring him out, Peter, bound with two chains, was sleeping between two soldiers, while guards in front of the door were keeping watch over the prison. Suddenly an angel of the Lord appeared, and a light shone in the cell. He tapped Peter on the side and woke him, saying, Get up quickly, and the chains fell off his wrists. The angel said to him, 
fasten your belt and put on your sandals. He did so. Then he said to him, wrap your cloak around you and follow me. Peter went out and followed him. He did not realize that what was happening with the angel's help was real. He thought he was seeing a vision. After they had passed the first and the second guard, they came before the iron gate leading into the city. It opened for them of its own accord, and they went outside and walked along a lane when suddenly the angel left him. Then Peter came to himself and said, Now I am sure that the Lord has sent his angel and rescued me from the hands of Herod and from all that the people were expecting. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord set me free from all my fears. The Lord set me free from all my fears. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul makes its boast in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. The Lord set me free from all my fears. O oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he answered me and delivered me from all my fears. The Lord set me free from all my fears. Look to him and be radiant, so your faces shall never be ashamed. The poor one called, and the Lord heard, and saved that person from every trouble. The Lord set me free from all my fears. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him, and delivers them. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the one who takes refuge in him. The Lord set me free from all my fears. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to Timothy. Beloved, I am already being poured out as a libation, and the time of my departure has come. I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith. From now on, there is reserved for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give me on that day, and not only to me, but also to all who have longed for his appearing. The Lord stood by me and gave me strength, so that through me the message might be fully proclaimed, and all the Gentiles might hear it. So I was rescued from the lion's mouth. The Lord will rescue me from every evil attack and save me for his heavenly kingdom. To him be the glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. You are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked 
his disciples, Who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they said, Some say John the Baptist, but others Elijah, and still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon, son of jo Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you lose on earth will be loosed in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Today, probably some of us, or probably you know already, why we are celebrating both the Feast of Saints Peter and Paul. Why they are celebrated together. Why not St. Peter's Feast Day is another day, and St. Paul's Feast Day will be on a different day. But we celebrated the Feast of both Apostles because they share the same the same way as they were martyred on the first century. Even though both of them they suffered on different days, they were as one. Peter went first, as probably we know that he is the apostles of the Jews. And Jesus appeared to him after the resurrection, and he died crucified upside down in 64 AD, 31 years after Christ died. And Paul, St. Paul followed, the apostle of the Gentiles, and Jesus appeared to him on the road to Damascus, and he was beheaded. And so we celebrate this day this day made holy for us by the apostles' blood. But Peter and Paul believe that Jesus is the Savior of the world. Peter and Paul both radically followed Christ in their words and in their deeds. And both of them died for Christ. The life that they lived is to die for Christ. I don't know if we can ask ourselves what is the difference between us and Saints Peter and Paul. I don't think there is no difference between us and them. Peter, as we know, is an ordinary fisherman and Paul a Pharisee who persecuted the Christians before he was converted. But at the end of their life, they become the pillar of the church 2,000 years ago. The church that they are told to build is still standing now amidst the persecutions of the church through time. It's because they were very strong educators of the faith and they had strong people who passed along their teachings from one generation to the next until now. And the church that they built is still here because both Saints Peter and Paul are the apostles of Christ, the King of the Apostles. They did not build the church for themselves, but they're sent by Christ. And the church will continue to survive because of our knowledge 
of who Jesus is, the Son of the living God, the Savior of the world. Like Saints Peter and Paul, we as followers of Christ, as priests, as parents, as teachers, as employers, or anyone who have some followers under our care. We are called to lead the people to God. Those who are following us, we are to continue to build the church in our home or wherever we are. When we cannot evangelize with words, we show them with our actions what Jesus is like, loving and compassionate. We are called to be not just good leaders, but godly leaders of the people we are entrusted by Christ, leading people to God. We heard from the reading today, both Peter and Paul, they suffered in their respective ministry when they're leading the people to God. Their suffering is like that of Christ. But the good news is, those efforts that is Christ-centered, the gates of Hades cannot triumph over it. The gates of Satan cannot triumph over it. As called to be Christian leaders, it includes leading those who need to be rescued to Jesus, who is the gate. We are to help rescue those lost souls who are in Satan's territory, help those who are enslaved by sins. And this was Christ's entire mission when he came to, to earth. And because of man's free will, we cannot just drag people through the gate, but we can show them the way with a lot of unconditional love and a lot of help from God. Although sometimes we cannot see progress in them yet, but meanwhile, the Holy Spirit is working toward healing forgiveness, and saving power of God. Change is coming, and we will continue to plant the seeds, and God will provide the harvest. With the help of God, we will pray that people will eventually recognize their escape opportunity to come to the gate, to come to Jesus, the way of love and mercy. This is our calling, to learn and to live the way of life of Saints Peter and Paul with the help of God. Amen. Please stand. Let us profess our faith, the faith of Saints Peter and Paul. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. But a mystery is for to anyone who come to share in the divinity of Christ. I humble myself to share my humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. With humble spirit and contrite heart, we accept it by you, Lord, who has sacrificed in their sight. This day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Wash me right from my sins and be my cleansing from my sins. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty, Father. May the Lord accept his sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May the prayer of the apostles, O Lord, accompany the sacrificial gift that we, that we present to your name for consecration. And may their intercession make us devoted to you in celebration of the sacrifice. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For by your providence, the blessed apostles, Peter and Paul, bring us joy. Peter, foremost in confession, the faith. Paul, its outstanding preacher. Peter, who established the early church from the remnant of Israel. Paul, master and teacher of the Gentiles that you call. And so each in a different way gathered together the one family of Christ and revered together throughout the world. They share one martyr's crown. And therefore, with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the two fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, 
he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Thomas our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, Saints Peter and Paul, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and we praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Now let us offer each other the sign of God's peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The body of Christ can be saved for eternal life. May the blood of Christ keep me safe for eternal life.
Let us pray. Grant us, O Lord, who have been renewed by this sacrament, so to live in the church, that persevering in the breaking of the bread and in the teaching of the apostles, we may be one heart and one soul, made steadfast in your love. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Now bow your heads for God's blessing. May Almighty God bless you, for he has made you steadfast in St. Peter's saving confession, and through it has set you on the solid rock of the church's faith. Amen. And having instructed you by the tireless preaching of St. Paul, may God teach you constantly by his example to win brothers and sisters for Christ. Amen. So that by the keys of St. Of Saint Peter and the words of St. Paul, and by the support of their intercession, God may bring us happily to that homeland that Peter attained on a cross, and Paul by the blade of a sword. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, come down on you and remain with you forever. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.